Hi, my name is Drew Monson. Do you like when a man in a ponytail talks to you about movies and film? You do? I know we all have a favorite man in a ponytail who talks to us about film, but do you mind if, just for today, I'm that man? Because, like, I don't mean to be rude, but 2023 was a cocoa year for movies. They made a movie named Wonka about a boy named Willy Wonka. They made a movie named Barbie about a girl named Jessica Barbie. They made a movie named Saltburn about a boy named Peter Saltburn. <laughs> they didn't have to do that, but they did. So here's what we're gonna do. The other day I compiled a list of my favorite and least favorite movies of the year and posted them online and some people took issue with it. That being said, I could like post a picture of my dad doing laundry and some people would take issue with it. Like at least one person would reply like, must be nice. And I'd be like, what do you mean? And they'd just block me. And I'd spend the rest of my life wondering. Do you think that when you die, if you go to heaven, all the people who blocked you for seemingly no reason um, visit you in heaven? Like they have to die too and they're like, Here's what happened. So I posted how I felt about some movies and I got responses such as red flag with a red flag emoji, nice touch. And also someone said, this is such a man's list, which honestly I can tell is meant as an insult, but as somebody who grew up being insulted in the other direction, where everyone was like, you have girl hair, you have girl voice, you have girl feet, stop wearing flip flops. If you had told me at that point in my life that one day people were going to call the things that I do man-like, I would have been like, yay daddy, yay. I would have gone like this. So I thought we could go through some of my most controversial opinions, judging by the responses I got. Just to be clear, I'm not like super smart about movies. I've never seen The Godfather. I pray I never do. I just really like watching them because I don't know what else to do. And sometimes I see one and I'm like, this sucks. And everyone's like, I hate you. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. When I watched it, I got mad. Okay, let's talk about Saltburn, baby. L <laughs> I put Saltburn on my list of movies that annoyed me. Looking back, I feel like I got a little bit caught up with some of the online hate I saw because I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes I'll like something and then I'll see people being like, this is for dumb people. And I'm like, I'm not dumb. I actually changed my mind and not even because I saw that for real. Like, let me just say, I saw Saltburn in theaters on opening day with my mother and we had an <laughs> interesting time. Can I just say, by the way, I know that it's weird to watch those type of scenes with your parents, but at the same time, I've been watching movies with my parents like my whole life. Like that's how I connect with them. We don't talk. Like on one hand, I get it, but on the other, it's like grow up. You know what I mean? Like we're both adults now. Like we've both done this, like everything in the movie Saltburn, I've done. And my mom knows that. <laughs> I just feel like, and I could just be reading into it in an inaccurate way, but it felt like a movie where they were like, watch the kids react to this one on TikTok. There's a certain scene in this movie that involves a grave. Um, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. If not, look it up. I saw people online saying that that scene was improvised. I don't buy it. I feel like if you did that without like warning everyone beforehand on a movie set, like you'd be arrested. Like if I was the camera guy and I'm like, okay, we're filming a scene where someone's crying on a grave. Here we go, rolling, or whatever, press record. All right, doing my job. Okay, he's having some fun. Okay. Okay, there he is, and you know what? I actually quit. I also thought that this character that Carrie Mulligan played was dumb. Like, why, why? Why does she look like that? Nobody looks like that. And if you know, don't send me your friend's Instagram. She doesn't count. Like, you can't just throw one Hunger Games character in there. Like, either have everyone look like that or no one. I just didn't like how her and the parents, they seemed like these cartoon characters who were like, ooh, yeah, da, 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 da. I don't like people who talk like that. I know that's not like an eloquent way to review movies, but it's how I feel in my heart. I gotta be honest though, I did love the ending. Like, I thought it was beautiful. I wanted to dance with him. Can you imagine if at the end of Saltburn, all of a sudden he's like, and now presenting. Drew Monson and I come out but like I'm wearing boxer briefs and he's like you promised and I'm like I'm shy at the end of the day the movie Saltburn really proves that you don't have to make a discord to have a British man ruin your life does that joke make any sense? I came up with it last night. I just feel like that's what happens sometimes when people get heavily immersed in the Discord community. Like they start a relationship with someone overseas and their life becomes complicated. By the way, I watched the Golden Globes last night. I don't know if you saw it, but the host was so bad. His monologue, I feel bad for him, but it was horrible. Like it was, it was hard to watch and people overuse that term, but I had a hard time watching it. So I was thinking like, what if I hosted the show? And I thought I could like do it for you right now. Like, I think I only have two jokes, but like imagine, this is me hosting the Golden Globes. 
Yes! Yes! <laughs> I'm so proud to be hosting this. Um, I am really happy. I got roller skates the other day. That's beyond, that's besides the point, but I wanted to show them off. I love you! Timothy Chalamet and Kylie Jenner are here tonight as a couple, guys. Hey, um, Kylie, do you, when you use your phone, what do you, what service, what cellular provider do you use? Do you use Verizon Shine? <laughs> okay, I know Timothy's busting up right now. Stop. <laughs> Timothy literally fell down. Oh, Timothy took a tumble. Okay, here's one that I got judged for. I thought Priscilla was boring. And now I feel bad because I talked to my mom about how I said that Priscilla was boring and she was saying that like it meant a lot to her and I just want my mom to be happy and not feel less than. I just thought that there was too many scenes of them in bed together kissing and then Elvis going, no baby, no honey, we can't do it yet. We can't baby, it's not right, it's not time. Like after the 15th time of that, I was like, I don't want to watch this movie anymore, baby. I just can't do it. It's not right. It's too, it's not fun for me to see. And yeah, like some people said, would I have maybe enjoyed the movie more if I was a woman and related to it more? Very possible. But to me, that's just like proof that they should have made a version of it that was more for me. I mean, literally, like imagine this, you're at the movie theaters and they're like, ladies to the left for Priscilla, boys, theater seven on your right. Time to watch Peyton. Someone sent me this as a message, by the way. Was it the pacing of the film? Or are you like an Elvis stan and don't like to see things that criticize him? Could I get even the smallest slice of the benefit of the doubt? Like a small one, like a tiny little gummy pizza slice. And maybe that's on me. Like, do I give off the vibe of somebody who would be like, don't talk about how my boy Elvis dated a 15 year old. He was just kidding. And by the way, he doesn't even do that anymore. He died. I think I'm naive because I didn't think it was controversial to call a Sofia Coppola movie boring. To be clear, I thought that her movie Somewhere from the year 2011 about a middle-aged movie star flirting with women and watching his daughter ice skate. It's interesting though, because I feel like it's almost a different version of that separate the art from the artist thing where like a musician does something bad and it's like, should we still listen to them? But this is like the inverse, or maybe not the inverse, where like, this is a movie about something worth talking about and reevaluating Elvis's celebrity and the sad experience of a woman. And if you didn't like that, you don't like her and you want her to shut up. But I don't feel that way. Like if she was in front of me right now, recounting her experiences with Elvis, I would not be like, honk shoe, honk shoe, I'm going to sleep. I'd be like, baby, it's getting late. I don't wanna hear this anymore. I just think they should have made a better movie about it. Like I did not emotionally connect. Like I've read the Wikipedia article of her life with Elvis and I think I felt more emotional. But honestly, I've always emotionally connected with the way Wikipedia articles are written. I'm not even joking. It's simple and I don't feel manipulated and I like that. Okay, can we talk about Wonka? Can we talk about the boy? Cause I feel like this is a movie that people on TikTok or something just decided was bad without seeing it. Cause I put it on my list of movies I really liked and I got responses from people being like, really Wonka? First of all, his name is Willy. It's not really Wonka, it never will be. People out there are saying that this movie was really Wonka or was Willy Wonka. That's actually funny, like if you're a teacher out there and a student raises their hand and doesn't say the right answer, be like, okay, Willy Wonka. They might cry, but it also might make another kid in class who's depressed laugh. It's up to you to decide if that's worth it. And look, I get it. The idea of Timothy Chalamet dancing around and making chocolate is kind of funny and sounds dumb. And for the first 30 seconds of watching Wonka, I was like scoffing, like <sighs> acting like I was better than it. And then all of a sudden it clicked. And I was like, that's not famous twink Timothy Chalamet. That's famous twink Willy Wonky. Cause I get it, like I know what we were all thinking when we saw that poster, like Willy Wonka is not meant to have that jawline. It's not right, it's too sharp. But if you see the movie, that's actually how he carves the Wonka logo into the chocolate. Literally, there's a scene where he goes, the sharpness of my chin to the chocolate it goes in. Just kidding, I made that up. You guys see Oppenheimer? Dang, what a, what a freaking movie, oh my gosh. You know, Oppenheimer, I don't know if you guys know this, had Josh Peck. Josh Peck from Drake and Josh was in Oppenheimer. Now, if you ask me, if you're gonna put somebody who made a big impact on my childhood in a Christopher Nolan movie, next time, make it SpongeBob. <laughs> make it Timmy Turner, you know what I mean? Let's get Timmy Turner detonating on that bomb. Right guys, here we go. Come on, Timmy Turner. Come on, guys. Barbie, let's talk about Barba. 
I feel like Barbie clearly became something bigger than itself. And because of that, if I say right now, like, I didn't really love Barbie, it almost sounds like I'm saying, I didn't like it when all those women got dressed up and had fun with their friends. But that's not true, I did like it, especially because it gave me and the boys a night off. <laughs> we sat around and kissed. Just to be clear, I tried to join in on the fun. I went to the movie theater with my friend and wore pink. Is it annoying of me to have done that? Does it just seem like I'm trying to be attractive? I literally got that like vest thing at a thrift store like three years ago for Halloween. I don't know what my costume was, like a cheerleader. And I was gonna meet my friend at the movies and I like got into an Uber and I didn't wanna wear it in the Uber cause I was still <laughs> like that part of me that people used to call a girl when I was a kid, like didn't wanna show my male driver what I had in my backpack. And then when I got to the movies, I like slowly took it out and kind of like looked both ways. Luckily my friend was right there. I was so scared that I was just gonna have to be in the lobby like. I've talked about this before but I did used to play with Barbies when I was a kid because I wanted to be like my sister and we had the motorhome Barbie and my friend had the flight attendant Barbie with the plane. So I was going into this with expectations. I literally thought that the movie was like every person was going to get a different like AI customized Barbie movie of like how they used to make their Barbies play. Like when I would play with Barbies, I would put her in a car and make her crash. Like my, she would get in a lot of accidents. I don't know why. So I was like ready for that, you know? And like, that's not my fault. I just found the dialogue kind of annoying. Like, I don't want to watch a movie where everybody is speaking like they are the dictionary. And I guess you could say that that's like the point, like they're dolls, but a lot of it just didn't work for me. Like there was funny moments, but a lot of it felt like a like an SNL skit. Like someone would post on Facebook and be like, I'm dead. And I'd watch it and be like, let me know if I sound like I'm trying too hard to be smart here, but it can kind of feel sometimes like movies or TV or like internet arguments have replaced like actual social movements. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. So like Barbie equals feminism. And if you say, I don't like Barbie, that equals anti-feminism. And that just feels kind of like a boring way to talk about movies to me. I also felt like some of the dialogue seemed kind of like defensive. Like, don't worry, we know what the right thing to do is. Like there's a part where Barbie says something or one of them says something and then another girl goes, okay, white savior. And that to me just felt like they wrote a scene and then were like, oh, people are gonna call this like a white savior. Like, let me just put that in there so people know that like, I know that that's like what's happening. So like, you know that like, I'm good. And maybe this will make you mad when I say it. Is this gonna make you mad? But I just feel like, okay, what it, like, why can't, can't, why couldn't Ken just have been her boyfriend? Like, that's her boyfriend. That's like the whole thing. Why did she have to be like, I'm too girl boss to be with you, Ken? Maybe I'm thinking too hard about it, but it's like, I get it. Like the patriarchy, like a woman doesn't like need a man to make her happy. And they're like showing that or whatever, but also love is beautiful. And I wanted to see them kiss. Like to me, making a Barbie movie where Barbie isn't dating Ken is like making an American Girl doll movie where Samantha Parkington wasn't orphaned at age five when her parents got into a boating accident. <laughs> like you can't, it just doesn't make sense. But in all seriousness, like I just think it wasn't my type of thing. Like I liked the colors. It was like visually stimulating to look at and everything looked kind of plastic and like big. But I enjoyed that like in the way that I enjoy one of those Instagram reels with like meditative music playing and someone's making like a micro microscopic burrito, but they're also using it as like a bed for a tiny little porcelain cat. What I'm saying is I didn't need to watch it for an hour and 45 minutes. That being said, just so you don't think this, I wasn't offended by the scene where all the uh, guys were playing guitar. I thought that was the funniest part of the movie and kind of like really cool. Like the way they did that was like, that was cool. And I liked the songs that Ken sang. Those were good. Like I had a fun time. I wish the whole movie was a musical. I loved Wonka. Greta Gerwig is here. Greta, um, your movie Barbie uh, was pretty funny. It actually made me Francis Ha Ha Ha. If you guys don't know, uh, Greta made a movie uh, 10, was it 10 years ago? Greta, over here, sweetheart, over here. Was it 10 years ago? Francis Ha, it was great. I loved it. I've seen it like five times. Can I just say, by the way, because I want to support good movies, I love The Iron Claw. Zac Efron, baby, I'm so proud of you. You did it again. This movie was so good, they should have called it High School Musical 5. There's a scene in The Iron Claw where Zac Efron is just laying in a small bed with his giant body, and they just show him getting out of the bed. I don't know what to say. I enjoyed it so much. Like, I found that scene more riveting than, like, the entire Lord of the Rings universe. I want to look like that, by the way. Would you, would you still watch my videos if I looked like that? And, but like still said all of the same things. They wouldn't make sense anymore. If I came on here looking like that, wearing that outfit with those muscles, but still being like, so I thought I was avoidant, but it turns out I'm anxious attachment style.
you guys would be like, no, you're not. Like, you're on steroids. Some people responded to my list saying, what did you think of FNAF? Like, Five Nights at Freddy's. If you don't know what this movie is, it's like based on a video game about like Chuck E. Cheese people who go crazy, I guess. To those people, I just want to say, I don't want to be mean. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I would, I will never watch that. I would never watch that. I would be angry if somebody <laughs> showed it to me. If I woke up and it was playing somehow, um, I'd run away. I made a list called movies that I didn't see but disagree with philosophically. I think this is what bothered people and honestly I knew it was going to I was kind of just joking around because I put Taylor Swift the Aeros tour and Saw 10 both equally as violent in my opinion Just kidding. Um, no, I there's a thing. I love a lot of Taylor Swift songs I've said this a lot. She just feels greedy to me like and I get it like we're all greedy like go to my patreon But her way of like selling things but acting like she's giving people a gift like literally on I think it was her birthday She was like you guys I didn't know how to celebrate my birthday, but I thought I would re release my movie for you guys for $20. Like that's not a gift, that's not a present. You can't just like wrap up a piece of paper that says give me $20 on it and be like, here you go mom. Or like give someone something and be like, ah, 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 pay me first. Like if you wanna sell something, sell something. Literally be like, buy my thing. That's cool, I guess. But to like try, I, I'm not trying to make you mad. If I know you might be watching this right now and you love her so much and you should go out there, literally stop watching me and love her. You'd probably be happier. You probably would be happier if you stopped watching my videos and just listened to Taylor Swift all day. Forget I said that, by the way. I need the views. Keep watching my videos. Just like, sh send them to your brother or something. I need more boys. But like, selling things to people and acting like it's this beautiful experience you're lucky to be a part of. Like, she did something. Unless I'm wrong about this, let me know, Swifty. If you're still watching, let me know. We can talk, we can talk this out. She like, sold pre-sale tickets of her movie where like, everyone was like, I'm going opening night. Like, I spent, you know. Movie tickets are like, expensive now. They're like, over $15 sometimes. And everyone was like, okay, it's coming out on, I think it was Thursday. And then all of a sudden she's like, guess what, it's coming out on Wednesday. And then the people who bought the Thursday tickets aren't the first to see it anymore. And she knows that. She knows, it, like at least say you're sorry. At least be like, my bad, no, I'm like, I would respect it if she was like, I know that's kind of rude, but I can't help it. Like if she said that, I would stream Lover. I immediately. No, I have streamed it and I, it's, it sounds good. But that being said, I didn't watch the movie. Like I'm sure it's, she writes a bunch of good songs. I'm sure it's fun to watch her sing them. By the way, some people were curious why I put Saw 10 in the list of movies I disagree with. I just don't like movies that have violence in them that to me feel like violence for the sake of violence. Like any movie where the marketing for it and the way that people talk about it is like, oh, did you see what they did to the guy's eyeball? I'm like, I don't want that. Like, I don't know, I feel like it's too much. Like, am I wrong that we just live in a very violent world and there are people who stand to benefit from us being desensitized to violence? Maybe that's unfair to put on on Saw 10 because there's no like real life equivalent to a little guy on a tricycle <laughs> torturing people, is there? Sometimes I'll see people try to make that same argument um, about like being desensitized to stuff, but in regards to like naughty scenes, like the type of scenes that were in Saltburn. And let me just say, I wholeheartedly disagree with that. Like in every way. Because like violence for the sake of violence is wrong, but pleasure for the sake of pleasure is natural. Please do not let anyone on the internet convince you that it isn't because there's like entire swaths of people right now that want to do that for some reason. They're wrong. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Leave me a comment. <laughs> Go crazy. Seriously, I want, you to go I want you to lose your mind in my comment section. I want you to worry everybody. Megan, some people judged me for liking Megan. Can I just say, if you didn't like Megan, we aren't friends. The reaction to this movie really bugged me because like there was some TikTok that showed a clip from Megan. If you haven't seen it, it's about like a little robot girl who dances around and there's this scene where as a joke, she's singing the song Titanium and it's like dumb on purpose. And the caption was like, I couldn't help but laugh at this moment. Cause it's a joke, honey. It's a joke. That's why, that's why. I couldn't help but laugh either because it's a comedy movie. Like I saw this stand-up comedian the other day. I couldn't help but laugh. Good. I feel like people who watch stuff like Megan and don't realize that it's supposed to be dumb and like, 
yeah, I'm gonna say the word campy, are the same people who watch like the most clearly staged and fake like TikTok videos I've ever seen and are discussing it seriously in the comments like they just viewed a snippet of real life. That's what's so hard about going on social media sometimes is like I feel like some people just live in backwards town and I don't know how to not have my nervous system be interrupted by that. Like people who don't realize something is a joke and then like deny it and try to change the subject. Like someone will make a video being like ants aren't real ants are fake. And then someone replies like, I literally saw one yesterday. And then someone responds to that and is like, the person's joke, like they know that, they're just kidding. But then the other person responds again and is like, okay, jokes should be funny. And it's like, that doesn't mean that they don't believe in ants. We're talking about two different things here. Jokes should be funny, you should be smart. You should be so smart. You should go to college today. That's my problem with every commentary YouTuber video being like, I watched a bad movie. Because people who watch that stuff all day, I swear, they think that's what's always happening. So now when they watch a movie that's cringy on purpose, they're like, this is cringe. And it's like, yes, Bubba, but for a different reason than you think. And it's like, Bubba, so you agree that they did a good job. I feel like there's so many people who are addicted to the dopamine hit of feeling smarter than the entertainment they watch. I'm going too far with this, I'm sorry, but for some reason, I felt very like bothered by people acting like Megan was dumb because Megan was funny and it was a funny movie and they did a good job and I love you. Whoever made Megan, I love you, baby. Nicholas Cage is here, the Cage Meister. Nicholas, do you think that you should be in a cage? You're kind of a freak, aren't you? You're kind of a freak, dear. <laughs> Somebody said that me putting the new Scream and Saltburn on my movies that annoyed me list was incel coded. That can't be true. Is that true? I guess Scream is an anti-incel movie. I didn't like the new Scream because it had Nickelodeon humor and I'm an adult. I love the Scream movies. I love the Scream movies. The new Scream was bad. I don't know how to describe it. There's just some movies about like young adults that are good. And there's some movies about young adults that feel like a show on Netflix that is dumb. Like one of those shows about like a bunch of teenagers stranded on an island and it's bad, but people say it's good, but you're like, this is corny. Also, no hard feelings for me. This was a I walked out of the theater with my dad type of movie. I just couldn't I couldn't take it anymore Sometimes I don't know if I'm going crazy because like people that I love and trust and people that I think are funny Will see a movie and they're like this I'm laughing and I watch it and I'm like I'm seething and sometimes I'm not even being fake when I say this like I genuinely worry that like is my perception off like am I just too clouded by my own anger or snobby attitude when it comes to comedy that I can't just enjoy something that everyone else is enjoying. And like, I like Jennifer Lawrence. Like she takes it all off in this movie and I didn't know what was supposed to be funny about like, okay, she's not wearing nothing. I'm supposed to be saying he, he, he. I'm not, neither is dad. May, December, I loved May, December. I saw somebody online saying, I don't want this whole video just to be <laughs> me angry at everyone. Let me just tell you, I realize that I'm like a little bit too cynical. It's a problem and I see it and it's tough for me too, okay? I don't wanna be mad at everyone, I really don't. Do you ever feel like that? Like, why am I mad at everyone? I know this is off-putting, but, but you guys are, you're starting it, I know you are. But I saw people getting mad that May, December was put on the comedy movies list for the Golden Globes. First of all, they do this a lot in the, I don't know if you're an award ceremony nerd like me, but they put movies that are like kind of comedies in the comedy and musical category because it gives them a better chance of winning and it's kind of dumb, but that's just what happens. But if you haven't seen it, I'm not gonna explain it right now, but the movie May, December is about a very disturbing thing, a gross thing, a sad thing, and it's also funny. And like that's, that's cool. Like if you can do that right, like you can certainly do it wrong and it can be like very offensive, but if you do it right, which I personally think they did, that's amazing. I, I think that's a beautiful thing. The idea that a movie being about a serious, sad topic means that everybody has to be like crying the whole time and straight faced like we are respecting this event right now. Like I hate to break it to you, but it's an entertainment product no matter what. Like whether you're crying or laughing, they're taking pain and turning it into entertainment. One's not more respectful than the other, in my opinion. Opinion. As long as the target of your jokes aren't like misguided. The weekend, is the weekend here? Where's the weekend? He's not here. Someone should invite, someone, uh, can we get the weekend here? Reality, that's one. I don't know if a lot of people have seen that. It's an HBO movie with Sydney Sweeney. That movie is the reason 
why when I see Sydney Sweeney being bad in a movie, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I saw what you did over there. Why are you doing this over here? Like, she's so good in this movie, it's crazy. Cocaine Bear, some people judge me for loving Cocaine Bear. I don't know what to tell you, I had a blast. There's a scene with the actress Margot Martindale, who's really just a treasure. I don't wanna spoil it if you haven't seen it, but it made me, it's so dark. The line she says after she does something horrible and the way she says it, it just made me happy. And if that makes you angry, block me. I thought Bo is Afraid was bad. I'm sorry to the people who loved it. I think I loved the first like 30 minutes maybe. And then immediately I was just like, why? Why is this, why? Do you ever watch a movie and you're like, why is this what this movie's about? Like, why did you choose this to spend 45 minutes on? Cause it's stupid. Cause sometimes I'll, have you ever tried to write a movie? Like I'll sit down sometimes and be like, I'm gonna write a movie. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I make it about? Never mind, cause I don't know what to make it about. And then you see a movie and you're like, oh wow, you really can just choose anything for it to be about and people will just like watch it I guess. I almost feel like now Bo is Afraid will serve the purpose that like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind used to serve. Even though I think that's a pretty good movie, it's like the type of movie that somebody brings up to impress somebody and show them that like I'm not boring. I'm not saying that if you liked Bo is Afraid you're just trying to like prove something. I'm just saying that it can and will be used in that way. For many years to come, people on dating apps will be like, did you see Bo is Afraid? You ever see that? So trippy. And like, I love the idea of a director getting a bunch of money to make something weird and unique and original, but like, just because it's original and weird and unique doesn't mean it's good. This is like a great example of that. I'm not gonna spoil it, but there's a scene at the end of the movie where a character like explains the theme and the plot that was already clear of the movie for like 35 minutes to another character. And when I, when I see something like that, I feel insulted and I feel hungry because the movie's like three hours and 20 minutes long and I forgot to put my Fritos in my backpack. You know what's kind of funny? I just took a break from filming this video for a while. And yes, I spilled on my gray t-shirt two times in a row. We don't need to talk about that. That has nothing to do with you. But I was looking at Twitter and I found this tweet. I want you to hear this tweet. It's from somebody named Clint Worthington. It says, recent past lives discourse. By the way, that's another movie that came out last year. If you didn't know, watch past Past Lives, if you haven't seen it, very beautiful, gorgeous movie. Recent Past Lives discourse reminds me that so much film discussion here has less to do with our opinion on the films themselves than the perceived opinions of those who like slash dislike said film. We are reviewing each other more than the movies. And it's tedious as, you know. I'm not gonna say the word, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's that thing they did in uh, Saltburn so often, but not Wonka. They wouldn't dare. But doesn't that sound familiar? Because I read that and I was like, oh my God, that's what I've been doing literally this entire video. I'm like, people who didn't like Megan, the movie about the robot girl, are sick. And it's probably only because I've convinced myself with my social media brain that the people who didn't like it are like judging me or about to judge me. So I have to judge them back or judge them first to protect myself or just to get angry because it's fun or I'm used to it now. I need to get off of social media. It's like therapy. Like I go to therapy, but I usually ghost my therapist and then I don't go to therapy anymore. And when I don't go to therapy, I spend all my time going, I need to go to therapy. And I almost think that that's like, that counts. Like it's the same thing to like dump my issues on the people around me and then be like, sorry, I need to go to therapy. And they're like, true, can you do it? And to be clear, I would pay more than what therapy costs to have like an older man wearing glasses sit next to me at all times in every moment that I'm about to open Instagram. Just have him like give me a, a light slap and be like, mm -mm. but I'm not allowed to bite him. Like that's a rule. But I think about it sometimes, like it makes sense that social media would make us angry and divided because like imagine it didn't exist and somebody walked up to you and was like, I have an idea. You know how people are like, some of them are cool, but like a lot of them are like annoying and dumb and really angry and really like self-righteous, but like undeservedly so, but like completely undeservedly so. And you're like, mm-hmm. And they're like, okay, well, what if you could read and hear and see? And they're like, well, what if you could have all of their opinions with you all the time mixed together with the most annoying and provocative and careless ones at the top? 
you'd be like, uh, can I say no? Personally, that sounds poorly designed. Maybe put those ones at the bottom, like flip it around. And they were like, but wait, now imagine my invention making everyone even more angry. And it just feeds on itself back and forth and it could lead to wars and allow them to continue. You'd be like, no, uh, please don't do that. You know, someone should kill you actually. I know I'm getting a little bit fake deep, but I also feel like that's kind of what this video is, even though I think it was kind of funny. It was kind of funny, right? But like, I put my opinions on movies out on Instagram and like being genuine, but honestly also throwing some stuff in there that I thought would like cause a little bit of controversy cause it's, it's fun for me. Like I'm a little bit like evil. And then that made me kind of angry, even though I expected it. And now I'm making this video, making you kind of angry. You're like, he didn't like Barbie as much as me. Ooh, I don't feel loved anymore. And then I said the thing about Taylor Swift, forget it. You're like, I'm about to chop this man's ponytail clean off. And it sucks that the grossness of social media extends to things that I love so much and are so dear to me, like movies and music and TV, because those are everything to me. Like my best memories alone, or even in general, are like me walking to the movies by myself and watching a movie and liking it and then walking back home by myself, especially when it's uh, gloomy outside. Or like me eating a big plate of pasta when I was 17 and, and eating a big plate of pasta in front of my mother's television watching four episodes of a TV show. Like on Netflix, but before they had like Roku, so you had to like do HDMI from your laptop to the TV. Real HDMI heads know what I'm talking about. Yes, you do, sir. But anyway, it's something that I feel like I should watch out for, what was described in that tweet, because I think I've been doing that a lot. And I want to be, number one, as happy as possible. And number two, not ruin my favorite thing in this world besides my beautiful children, movies and TV, which are the names of my two children. There's movies, my daughter, we call her Move, and then my little sunny boy, Television. We call him TV for short. And it technically stands for Tyler Vacation. Anyway, real quick, some more movies I loved. Showing Up, only watch this one if you're okay with movies where like not a bunch of things happen. Michelle Williams is amazing. Hong Chow is amazing. I love Kelly Reichardt movies. She's a genius. I wanna be in one of her movies. Come on, I could play the guy who makes YouTube videos. Blackberry, I loved it. I love Matt Johnson and almost everything he does. If you wanna see the guy from Always Sunny bald and yelling a lot, if you maybe have a crush on him and also like being yelled at, you could watch it and pretend that it's personal. Talk to me, I loved, even though it was kind of gross and there were some scenes that I feel went too far. The lead actress in this movie, I feel is like unappreciated. Like horror actors never get nominated for awards, which is really dumb. Sophie Wilde is her name. She was like the best, like she blew me away. Okay, just for fun right now, I'm gonna go through the movies that made the most money this year and tell you my thoughts on them in like two words if I didn't talk about them already. Super Mario Brothers movie, never, I would never. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, sorry, but not a chance. Guardians of the Galaxy, don't even talk to me about that. Avatar The Way of Water. I saw the first Avatar and I, oh. Avatar The Way of Water. More like the way of, get this the heck away from me. Ant-Man Ant and the Wa Ant Wasp and the Baba. Doo -doo. Uh, I saw the I saw the first and second Ant-Man. I thought they were funny, but I heard the new one was bad. John Wick Chapter 4. Absolutely not, sir. You can't. You can't do that. <laughs> I'd never seen it. It looks dumb. And I liked the equalizer, but John Wick, come on, you can't be a guy with long hair. You can't do that. No, here's what it is. You can't have long hair and a gun. Like you can't, don't do both. That's rude. It makes the rest of us look like we don't have guns. And all of a sudden when I'm walking around with my long locks, people are like, are you armed? No, and I shouldn't be. Indiana Jones, mm -mm, Mission Impossible, saw that with my dad, it was okay. Hunger Games, I thought about watching that, but I knew that I would get bored immediately. Transformers, I tried to watch that at home, the new Transformers movie, it was, whew. That's horrible. Anyway, this was actually fun. I, I realized like halfway through that I my light was on the ground and so the shadows is like, is that annoying? I felt relaxed making this, which is rare for me. Maybe I'll make more videos talking about movies. Go to my Patreon. I have a story about lying on Instagram and then feeling bad. I don't know if it's like frustr- is it frustrating to listen to me just like hating on stuff or is that like, is that calming for you because you're like someone else out there is, is like hateful in the same way that I am? Cause I feel like what I'm saying makes sense, but I also know it could just come off as like, calm down. Leave me, by the way, yeah, I only know like four chords on the guitar. This one, this is the easiest. If you don't know how to play the guitar, you can just put two fingers down, like near the top, on the second one or the third one, on the second thing, and you just go like this. 
Gorgeous has <sighs> Gorgeous has life. I'm gonna do this one as a I'm gonna sing my fan if you have never watched my videos before I sing a song at the end called that goes leave me a comment I'm very lonely and I used to swear in the song um, but I stopped swearing because I was afraid of, of YouTube uh, and I know that that's not okay and I and I apologize every single night I'm gonna do this one as a duet like there's two people talking to each other. I thought I'd switch it up Leave me a comment I'm very lonely Leave me a comment I'm very lonely Are you lonely? Leave me a comment I'm very lonely Why are you lonely? Comment I'm very lonely Please talk to me 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 me? Whatever Let me, you know what, that was bad Leave me a comment, I'm very lonely. Leave me a comment, I'm very lonely. La 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 la, leave me a comment, I'm very lonely. La 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 la. Coco, coco, coco. I love the word coco. I've been really into the word coco. That's actually a movie. Speaking of movies, coco the movie from Disney. Coco movie Disney, Coco movie Disney, Coco movie Disney, Disney made a Coco movie, 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 Disney made a How would how long would you watch that? Okay, I guess I'm leaving. Except on my Patreon, I'll make another video, but you know I know that you might not have the money to be on there. But but this year for my birthday. <laughs> I thought everyone could join my Patreon for my birthday. And just to be clear, my birthday is a lot. My birthday does not just happen once. No, no, no. I'm I'm different, okay? You know, when's your birthday? Hmm? Mine too. Mine too. <laughs> same here. Oddly enough, same here. Who, whatever everybody just said, same here. You know, we should all lie about our birthday more, right? Like if, if you, especially if you go to another country, like I want to travel, I don't have a passport. I've never done it. I know, it's bad. I'm bad. I know, lashings, I deserve them. That actually hurt. I love you. I love you so much. Um, but like, if you, like, come on. I should just be like, it's my birthday. Like pretend I'm from England and be like, Looks like it's my birthday, you know. <laughs> Looks like, well, can't, you can't help it, can you? You can't help it, you know. And here I am at the pub, yeah. You give me something for free, you know? yeah. Give me something for free, yeah. Mate, I need something for free. I can't help it's my birthday, yeah. Do, do British people say yeah after they say, for, in, in my head, is that a thing at all? Does Harry Potter do that? See, like, just did a spell, yeah. Can't help but do a spell, yeah. Okay, why is this funnier than the rest of the video? This should have just been in the beginning. Why Why am I cracking you up like crazy right now? You should see your face. That hurt my stomach to talk like that. Okay, I'll see you tonight.